California has been working on a very strange experiment. Very strange, but very cool. They are putting solar panels across rivers and estuaries. And even though many people think it's ridiculous, it's actually working. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. I'm Sam Evans. You're watching The Electric Viking. And when I was in California, in fact, on the couple of occasions I've been there, people always talk about one thing. It's not electric cars. They do talk about those, but it's more about water. YouTube's new algorithm means that you're often not getting all of our videos in your feed. There's 7,500. I'm pretty sure you're probably not seeing a lot of them. In the description, there is a link to our newsletter. Click on that and you can get an update every day of all the latest news in the electric car industry. We have water problems. We don't have enough water. I hear that all the time from almost everyone. California's water system is considered to be one of the most complex in the world. Thousands of miles of canals snake through central California's agricultural fields, transporting water from the state's intricate network of dams and reservoirs to feed the thirsty almonds, strawberries, and grapes, among many other crops, that cover sprawling fields. Most Californians only glance at the system from a passing highway, remarking at its many miles of efficient uniformity. But they also criticize. They say it's a bit of a mess. Soon, however, these waterways will look very different, and they'll be even more efficient at doing what they need to do than they were in the past. Near Hickman, California, just outside Modesto, a 110-foot wide grid of solar panels now covers a section of canal, arching over the gently flowing water. Solar projects have long been a crucial piece of California's movement to saving money. And the reason they're saving money is because clean energy is cheaper than fossil fuels. These solar panels are part of a new project that's hoping to do far more than just generate electricity. Dubbed Project Nexus, the 20 million state funded initiative hopes to better understand whether these installations can be an even more efficient approach to solar energy. So far, it looks like they actually are. The waterways already irrigate much of the state's crops, but now they will also cool the solar panels. Just by nature of being underneath them, increasing the panel's efficiency. And also, at the same time, the panels are shading the canals, reducing evaporation and suppressing aquatic weeds. Between this installation and a 20-foot wide section that was completed on another part of the canal in March, the project will generate a total energy output of 1.6 megawatts while producing a host of other benefits. Now, when solar panels get too hot, they actually lose some of their efficiency. So by putting these solar panels across the river or the canals, it improves the efficiency of the solar panels and also decreases the amount of evaporation of the water. Jordan Harris was driving along Interstate 5 one day about a decade ago, looking at the canals traversing California's agricultural fields. Having spent much of his life in France, he wondered why California's waterways were left to bake in the inland heat, while France's canals were often tree-lined and shaded. I can tell you that they are, because I've swum in many of France's canals when I cycled my bike around the world for a year. It seemed like a natural problem to try to solve, he said, an attempt at better protecting the canals from sun and wind, especially amid California's ongoing drought. As part of a new environmental project in India, Harris had seen canals topped with solar panels previously. In 2017, he founded Solar Aquagrid and commissioned a study from UC Merced to analyze the viability of a similar initiative in California. The university projected possible outcomes if the roughly 4,000 miles of canals throughout the state were all covered in solar panels. Its findings published in the academic journal Nature Sustainability in 2021, show that it could result in around 63 billion gallons of water savings annually. 63 billion gallons every single year. That's about 250 billion litres and is the equivalent of the residential water needs of more than 2 million people.
Moreover, when taking into account both the solar output and the benefits to the canal itself, the over canal panels are 20 to 50% more beneficial than typical solar panels mounted on a roof or on the ground. The findings were compelling and soon Solar Aquagrid and UC Merced team teamed up with the California Department of Water Resources and the Turlock Irrigation District for the pilot. The latter is a uniquely well positioned utility since it both manages a section of canals and operates as the local power provider. Facing new state mandates on clean energy production, Turlock Irrigation District spokesperson Brandon McMillan said the utility was eager to take part in the project especially since it's cost prohibitive to place solar arrays on local land. He said it'll take a full year before the utility can fully understand the cost benefits of placing solar panels over canals, especially when it comes to maintenance costs. But so far, the reduction in aquatic growth could be a huge time and cost savings. It likely would never make sense to put the panels on the entirety of the 250 miles of canals the district manages. There's just too much water to cover. But if the project is successful, it will make sense to add them in many more sections of the waterways, which is exactly what California is planning on doing. The country's first over solar over canal project began producing power in 2024 near Phoenix, Arizona. The 2,700 feet of panels blanketing part of the Casablanca Canal benefit the Gila River Indian community and were funded as part of President Joe Biden's Inflation Reduction Act. The next phase of the project, which adds even more panels, is already actually happening. Building on the success, as well as the strides made in India in the past 15 years, Project Nexus is experimenting with different types of solar installation to figure out which one is the absolute best. Another section of canal estimated for a November installation will use a retractable system that sits much closer to the surface of the water itself, allowing for less steel and concrete since the panels won't need to be elevated. Harris said with each iteration, with each version of their solar panel system, they are better understanding the costs and benefits of what the future of solar topped rivers and canals and waterways will look like. Various factors like which way the panels are facing or the conditions around them could impact which technology is ultimately most effective and therefore which one wins. They want to have a full year's worth of data before releasing anything official, but they say so far it's been an enormous success. Finding dual benefits to state infrastructure, McCoon said, is going to be crucial in the future. The challenges of climate change are going to really force us to do more with a lot less. So this is just an example of the type of infrastructure that can make us more resilient. It may also be a chance for California to be a leader in this technology on a global scale. Harris said he's had people interested from Romania, Ukraine, Vietnam, Spain and others. And they all want to know more about exactly how to do this. I think the project can really be symbolic of the state of California's commitment to both sustainability and innovation. Now, I personally think this idea is genius. And at some point in the future, especially in cities and states where water is a scarce resource, solar panels will cover large swathes of water, both saving billions of gallons of water itself and improving the efficiency of the solar panels that cover them. What are your thoughts? How do you see this playing out? Let me know in the comments and thank you for watching. The Sydney EV International Motor Show. If you want to get a 50% discount on your tickets, all you got to do, click the link in the description and use the promotion code that's in the description. Just copy and paste that. Now I should mention there's only 200 tickets available per day. So if you go to use the promo code and you can't get a ticket, wait till the next day. Don't wait until the day before the show to get your tickets because otherwise you'll probably miss out on getting the 50% discount.